Welcome to another MedCram lecture. We're going to talk about penicillins today, and don't worry, you're not going to be asked to memorize this structure for penicillin, but we're going to talk about the, the evolution of the penicillin molecule in terms of the drug market and the different types of penicillins that are out there and why there are different types of penicillins. And I think the story is instructive in terms of the different types of penicillins on the market today and what they're useful for. The first thing I wanted to show you though is this area right here in the middle and that is the site of the penicillinase action break in the beta lactam ring. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So first of all, let's start with penicillin. And we'll represent that as a P here. Now, penicillin was invented back in the 1940s. One of the very first antibiotics used worked really well on kind of the uses that they had for it at the time. And the type of uses that they had for it, if you can imagine this bacteria with all of the wounds during the war, they were looking for an antibiotic that was good for skin flora. In other words, gram-positive organisms. So it really didn't work that well for gram-negatives. So gram-negatives weren't really covered. So penicillin did a really good job at attacking the bacteria through these penicillin binding proteins that were on the surface of the bacteria. Problem was these bacteria eventually became resistant to it and they formed this thing called penicillinase which basically destroyed the penicillin and prevented it from doing its job. So it basically formed resistance. So as a result of that, the next thing that came up with was a what they call the semi-synthetic penicillins. And so you'll notice that these have the abbreviation M O N. M stands for methicillin. O stands for oxacillin. And N stands for nafcillin. All three of these were able to attack this bacteria that was still making the penicillinase. And they did it at the same binding protein. Okay, the penicillin binding protein. But when these penicillinase molecules that were made by the bacteria tried to attack it, they couldn't. And so we successfully were able to overcome one generation of resistance by using these semi-synthetic penicillins. Methicillin, oxacillin, nafcillin. And these medications here are probably the best medications for staph. So if this bacteria that we're talking about is a skin flora and it's staph, then the best ones are these semi-synthetic penicillins, still even to this day. Okay, so the next problem was, so the skin flora works well, we got these medications that work really well, but they don't cover the gram negatives. We need to cover gram negatives. And so a couple of things happened. They came up with different types of penicillins that would cover that. And so there's really two types of bacteria afterwards that were looked at. Of course, the skin flora was still something that needed to be covered. So skin flora, which is gram positive. So I'll put here skin gram positive. And then there was some, you know, the group of bacteria that had gram negatives that were the, let's say the easy ones, the easy gram negatives. So like the E. coli's in the urine and the E. coli's in the stool. And then there were the gram negative hards. Okay, so these are the resistant gram negatives like, and the big one here is Pseudomonas. And so at first they came up with antibiotics to cover these gram positives and some of these easier gram negatives and those are known as the amino penicillins. So things like ampicillin or the oral form amoxicillin. And those, again, killed really well. The ones that they came up with for these really difficult ones like the Pseudomonas was called extended spectrum penicillins. 
And which ones are we talking about there? We're talking about piperacillin and ticarcillin. So I'll just say pip and ticarcillin. And those did a good job of attacking this with the pseudomonas in it. But then a problem came. These bacteria started making something called beta lactamases. And it started breaking up the antibiotics in that square I was showing you at the beginning. And so these beta lactamases would attack here and there would be resistance. Okay, so we had a real problem. So what we did was we started adding these beta lactamase inhibitors. So when we took, for instance, ampicillin and coupled it with Solbactam to make unison, now we could attack that bug because in addition to that it would also attack the beta lactamase and take it out. Also we would take amoxicillin and couple that with clavulonic acid and we would come up with augmentin okay and that would do the same thing we would be able to attack that bacteria because we would get rid of the beta lactamase similarly down here we would take piperacillin and we would couple it with tazobactam and we would get a medication called zosin and we could take ticarcillin and couple that with clavulonic acid and come up with the medication Timentin. And again, that would attack the bacteria like it normally would, and these would attack the beta lactamase to prevent the beta lactamase from eating the beta lactam ring of the piperacillin or the tazobactam. So notice how many different medications we have. We have regular penicillin, we have methicillin, which is good against mostly gram positives, but not a lot of gram negatives, and especially staph. Oxacillin and nafcillin are in that same category. So naf would be the appropriate choice in a sensitive staph aureus. That's probably one of the best medications you can give. Ampicillin solbactam is great for most gram positives and a few easy gram negatives. Amoxicillin with clavulonic acid or augmentin, also the same. The other option is Zosin, or Piperacillin Tazobactam, which has pseudomonal coverage along with Timentin, which is Ticarcillin Clavulonic Acid, which also has good pseudomonal coverage. So depending on what your spectrum is that you want to use, you can use these different penicillins. Now, something in the last 10 or 20 years occurred where we had a big problem. And the big problem is that Staph aureus, which we'll put up into this area, developed something called MEK-A. Now what's MEK-A? MEK-A is a mutation that actually changed the penicillin binding protein here. So no longer would penicillin work on Staph aureus, and no longer would methicillin, oxacillin, or nafcillin work on Staph aureus. So this was known as methicillin resistant Staph aureus. In other words, the MEK-A gene made MRSA, methicillin resistant Staph aureus. So we had to come up with a completely new way of attacking this organism because the actual binding site itself had been changed. And so the other medications that can be used if it's a mild infection, you can use things like Clinda, which uh, hits the 50S subunit of the ribosome. There's Septra, which actually hits folic acid and purine production. And then there's Quinolones, which can also hit it occasionally, which uh, has to do with DNA gyrase. But for the more severe infections, the way to go is Vanco. Okay, Vanco which also works on the cell wall in a different way. You can use daptomycin, or you can use linazolid. 
linazolid, dapto, or vanco. And so that is why we use vancomycin now in almost all gram-positive infections that are hospital acquired because of the high risk of MRSA infections. So we talked about a lot of things here. This is the story of penicillin. Very briefly, I would say that in terms of side effects, you have to worry about cross-reaction with penicillin allergies. Probably the one that has the least amount are the newer ones like Zosin and Timentin. However, the things that you have to be concerned about with Zosin are low platelets. If you see low platelets in someone with Zosin, just be aware of that. So, the number one drug to use in a patient with M. SSA or methicillin sensitive staph aureus is nafcillin. We like to say that nafcillin gets up in the morning to kill staph aureus. So if it's sensitive to it, that's the best one to use. If it's not sensitive to it, then you'll have MRSA, then vanco, dapto, and linazolid are your choices. Hope this helps. Thanks for joining us.